Bitcoin's hash rate is at an all-time high, and that is a real indication of the security of the network. Uh, on Ethereum, we're seeing uh, the total value uh, uh, staked at 24 billion. That is an all-time high. Uh, so we think the infrastructure is working beautifully. That was Kathy Wood, CEO of ARK Investment Management, reiterating her faith in crypto assets in the wake of FTX collapse. We also heard a more faithful uh, tone coming from Aaron Brown in our first segment. So let's get the counter argument now. Joining us is crypto skeptic John Reed Stark. He is president of John Reed Stark Consulting and former chief of the SEC Office of Internet Enforcement. So, John, thank you so much for being here. Aaron Brown was of one opinion. I understand that you are of a very different one. What's your reaction to the conversation? Conversation we just had. Okay, I'm not sure exactly where to start, Kaylee. Um, so stop the clock here. First of all, the FTX was not regulated. Uh, you know, I worked at the SEC for 20 years, 11 years as chief. I've taught securities regulation at Georgetown and Duke Law School for 20 years. I've been in this space for 35 years. I don't know what he's talking about. There's no oversight, no consumer protections, no net capital requirements, no, 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 no licensure. He was talking about the uh, FTX exchange. And I get it. And Genesis. I mean, they were regulated um, in the Bahamas, they, they FTX, are, and Genesis and, Ge and Gemini here. They are not regulated. Regulated means audits, inspections, examiners, net capital requirements, all of the things that SEC regulation entails. So they're not regulated. They may have filed something with FinCEN so they could file suspicious activity reports, but they're not regulated. There's no fundamentals to anything that he's talking about. You know, the Bitcoin, crypto, it's mathematical, computational blather. There's okay, no, well, there's I mean, no the cash flow. There's no may take nothing issue with that, uh, John. But it's what, not what really the point, right? We have to differentiate between Bitcoin, the blather, digital blather no, that don't. you're talking about, and the centralized exchange, right? This is a business um, just trading crypto assets. It isn't FTX, isn't Bitcoin or Ether. No, we don't have to differentiate that at all because most people can't have the wallet that holds the crypto that is somehow tied up in a computer, in a popcorn tin, under a blanket, in a bathroom. Everyone like can have DOJ it. Literally, it. Ev that's the whole point of Bitcoin. Oh, Everyone what? can have a wallet at home tell, with a private okay, key. Okay, tell me, tell me for what. It doesn't function well as a currency at all. Okay, you can't use it to buy groceries. It's too volatile. I have. It's too risky. It's too well. That's that's your problem. Every and time beer, you do, you have I've to bought spend gas capital with gains. It. I've bought video okay. games with it at GameStop. You know, I've used it for a lot okay. of things. Have you paid capital gains every single time that you've bought bought it? Uh, every time you used it? No, no, I haven't. Of course you haven't. Well, you should, because that's what the, the IRS would require from you and just got Although $80 billion, so they're going to come after you. Although I spent it at six, so I wouldn't, I, w I bought it for $800, and I spent it when it was worth about $600, so I wouldn't okay, have so paid you capital have gains. But every single crypto transaction is laden with fees, is risky, comes with all these, these capital gains requirements, and it doesn't function well. And starting in January 2024, those exchanges are going to have to report those transactions on 1099s, just like any other broker-dealer would. And retailers, if you're trying to buy, you know, a Rolex on 47th Street for more than $10,000, are going to have to report that to the IRS. So there's going to be more transparency and more sunlight on these transactions than ever before. And you're completely leaving out all of the dire externalities, okay? Not just that there's no oversight, no net capital, no insurance, no inspection, no nothing protecting you in any way, shape, or form. You become an unsecured creditor like all of these Celsius, Voyager, mm -hmm. um, FTX, all of them have become the dire. FinCEN just reported the other day 1,200 ransomware, 1,241 ransomware payments last year, double the amount of the year before. And I'm an expert on ransomware. It's growing. It's getting worse. $1.2 billion. None of it recovered. No one found. And drug dealing, human sex trafficking, sanctions evasion, um, nuclear weapons. The GAO came out with a report that said North Korea was using it to buy nuclear weapons. Well, we have so the very use dollars, right? For I mean, what? don't, don't, don't these what? crimes normally happen with U.S. dollars, John? Uh, of course they do. You know, but that sort of what about at a much higher is scale, a fraud. right? At, that kind at, of what about at a much is higher is scale, flawed exponentially flawed more. And econ oh, absolutely wrong. If you that is a flawed and anemic pivot. That's what I teach my law students. What about fiat? What about this? Of course there are problems in fiat. Of course there are. But Bitcoin and crypto have brought in a crypto crime wave of epic proportions. And for what?
We already have digital currency. If, if Bitcoin were around before credit cards and then credit cards came along, that would solve it. There's Cash App, there's PayPal, there's, there's a yeah. million ways, there's Zelle, that you can use this and you get protection. You're not with an unsecured Zelle? creditor. What protection do you get with Zelle? All sorts of protections. You call your bank and you say this transaction they didn't don't reverse happen. Charges. And there's an intermediary. John. Oh, absolutely they do. Nope. Absolutely. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. All of these in intermediaries are critical to the consumer. And forgetting about those intermediaries is absurd. Taking yourself into the wild, it's not the wild west. It's not anarchy. It's walking dead like apocalyptic free-for-all. You have no protection whatsoever. Okay. And you right. are There's stuck. no FDIC in crypto is, is something we bring up often. Right. So there is a lack of consumer protection. But at the same time, consumers also suffered for Madoff and Enron. And there have been examples oh. in traditional finance where regulatory Again. regulated entities have also seen episodes in some ways akin to this. So why do you view Kaylee, the crypto please. ecosystem as is so entirely different? Okay, first of all, of course there have been crimes, financial crimes. That's what I did for 20 years. But again, crypto has ushered in a new crime wave because criminals have a way to conduct transactions and conduct money laundering like they've never had before. Read the DOJ reports on it, the GAO reports on it, the Treasury reports on it. Okay. All of these reports, you can go to my website, digitaltrustwatch.com. I don't make a penny from any of this, not a nickel, not a dime. I'm just out there telling it like it is, speaking truth to power, because this is absurd to think that these kinds of dire externalities should just be ignored as okay. the kind of thing that happens no matter what. Try to pay a ransomware, try to make a ransomware payment of $5 million with cash. You can't do it. You can't so John, go to your bank. You talked about how these are unregulated entities. How much fault should be placed on the regulators for not moving quickly enough in tandem with this industry, why do you fault just the technology and the idea of it itself? Oh, uh, well, you know, to blame the SEC here would be like Oswald blaming the Secret Service for, the, for letting him shoot Kennedy. I mean, the, the SEC has brought more than 100 actions in the area of crypto, and they have won every single time. Initial coin offerings, crypto lending programs, SAFs, SAFTs. The SEC has won all of those cases every time they bring these cases in. And they're, they're, they, as far as regulation goes, they couldn't have been more outspoken. Both Chairman Jay Clayton and then later on Chairman Gensler have made speech after speech, regulatory pronouncement after another, talking about the perils of crypto. To doing, you know, they, they, they stopped Coinbase from uh, issuing a lending program. Thank goodness, saving billions of dollars. They stopped BlockFi from doing it also. BlockFi paid a penalty of $100 million. Now the SEC is just another creditor for $30 million on BlockFi's list. But they stopped that lending program and they stopped it from happening. So, and, and look at the Bitcoin spot ETF. Imagine if that had been allowed to happen, what, it, what would go on? So all of these things, the SEC has been very aggressive. And they're just a civil agency. Look, mm -hmm. I'm a big time SEC critic. I wrote an op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal criticizing the SEC for some things they've done. I've criticized them for what they do on cyber, but not on crypto. I, I do think DOJ needs to do more. I think that people need to be put in jail. I don't understand. Voyager makes representations that the FDIC has somehow insured the deposits of their customers. The FDIC yep. sends them a letter to stop doing it. Why is no one in jail for that? John, so thanks so I much. I do fault DOJ for that.